Welcome back to Drag Duel. My name is Bootsy. And I'm Derek. And this week we asked our warriors to tickle our funny bones <laughs> in the very first Drag Duel roast. We want them to be funny, make fun of the judges, make fun of at least half of the remaining cast, and the eliminated warriors. We want creative jokes. Do not use material from other programming. They can either do the roast as themselves or a made-up character, whichever they think they'll be funnier as. All we want is to laugh. And on the runway, category is monochromatic. A full look made from head to toe out of the same color. It's also time to announce the winner of last week's side quest. We had them put on their own little cooking shows and you guys got to vote for the winner who will receive a $50 prize. Our top three vote getters were Trisha Can, Susan, and Tyler Nall. And with 49% of the vote, which I think is one of the highest of the entire season, our winner is Tyler Nall. Thank you so much for making us all go through the trauma of the Julia Child Vox Talks yet again. Let's check back in with our warriors. Last we left Christy Da Vinci, she was having some problems with her runway. Let's see how that is shaking out. So it's kind of the 11th hour right now and I started making a runway and I fucking hated it. So I'm restarting with a different color. What I was originally going with was this like caramel and then I decided to do yellow and I started making a yellow outfit that I was like, this is just, it's, I can't wear this. It's just bad. But I'm kind of changing directions completely because I just feel like at this point, there is so much pressure on me in this competition where it's like either they love what I'm doing or I'm a fucking flop and I'm in the bottom. So definitely would like to not be in the bottom again. I'm actually very happy with what I ended up going for with my runway. I was really going through it. I literally sat around for days. Like I was like, I literally can't think of something to make. I felt like every idea I came up with, I was like, I don't like that or I've done that before. Or I'm like, it has to be the most insane thing I've ever made or I was not like, I just been putting so much pressure on myself. And I'm like, it was literally stunting my creativity. I literally was putting so much pressure on myself from being in the bottom of my I was literally like, I could not draw anything. And the first step of my process is always to do like a fashion illustration before I do anything. I literally could not draw a single line. I felt like I was going crazy. I was literally like going feral for like days. Like I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, why can't I just like think of something? I'm glad I got something done that I actually really like. So I love that. So we're gonna do makeup. We're gonna speed paint and get cunty and gorgeous. And we're gonna live our life in our fantasy and our truth. And nothing's gonna stop us. Not on this roast. <laughs> This runway was struggle Tina again. I did not only struggle in the challenge, but I struggled on the runway. And I, I was scrambling so much for ideas, but I landed on the color green. I was hoping for yellow, but then I saw someone else was doing yellow, but turns out they weren't doing yellow anyway. So I could have done yellow, which pissed me off, but whatever. So I just decided on green. I love green. Um, it's my favorite color, so why not? And so I decided to do that. It, this was like idea, this is like concept number six, honestly. And it was so stressful. The morning of. The morning of. Literally rhinestoning the full thing the morning of filming it. And I had to be at work at 5 p.m. that day. <laughs> and you were in drag at 4.30. Yes! <laughs> and I live 15 minutes away. You guys really don't know. This runway, you guys do not even understand the stress that me and my sister, AJ Knox. The workhorse. The workhorse queen. <laughs> Spray painting. Real painting. painting. Cutting, stoning, stoning. No, no sleep. sleep. <laughs> Nobody believed in me. Bus, club, another club, another club, another club. Hot glue. Hot glue. Gem, Gem tag. Jewel it. <laughs> Ribbons. Gorilla tape. Gorilla tape. I am doing a lime lips look. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're crystallizing the limes. I'm doing the hat. It's like right a good. Now. We're doing the hat. Put in the light queen. Hello! For like lime juice drips and everything, we have crystal, green crystal, um, like... Chain. Ch yeah, a chain to put on the... Lime pieces. This is workroom footage of me writing roast jokes. 
I love roasting. Roasting is part of my life. Oh. Sorry, typo. So here's our look. If you could, oh my God, if you could see the stoning of it. That, like, do you see that? So this is completely stoned. Um, and then here's the piece de resistance. Well, one. Hi, wig. Hi, tinsel wig. Here's this. Hi, this is my corset. These go on my hips, but it's little fringy pieces. I also stone like the bones and things like that. But majority of this is AJ's work. I just told her, I just told her what to do. And I was like, please, can you help me while I get ready? This was being done while I was painting for the runway. So I'm very happy with what we were able to achieve um, on this corset. I'll see you out there again. Let's see how this one goes. So this week, I really was struggling with the runway. It really, monochromatic is a hard theme because it's one of those ones that like, you want to get the right color. You want to be the color. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, what do I pick? I could pick brown because it would be sickening with my skin tone to do like all monochromatic. Then I was like, oh, maybe I'll do blue or pink or I, I just could not decide. So I was like, I went to a new fabric store, which is sickening, and I went around, checked it out, and I found this sweatpants fabric. Just straight up sweatpants fabric. I've never seen it before in my life. So I was like, oh, I want this. I was like, oh, I want a look made out of this. And then we were like, what if you did gray, my boyfriend said, and I went, oh. So today I'm going to be showing you how to put in this boning. I've already done some. This is the piece for the corset. Um, I don't want to give too much of my look away yet, so that's all you're gonna get. Okay, so here I am. This is the wig for my challenge this week. I chose to do gray for the runway. Yeah, she needs a lot of help. It does kind of help with the theme that I'm going with because it is supposed to look like I just got out of bed. So it kind of matches honestly where it's at, but I do want to kind of fix her up a little bit. You know, use some techniques I've learned like hot combing. So I'm just gonna time lapse me working on all of this to show y'all just a little bit better of a wig. So here we go, and this actually turned out a pretty sick thing. It's just like a nice little fresh up. I mean, it's been a while since I last wore this wig. I think it was Queen's Purgatory promo. Shout out to Glass, Miss you Gorge. Get ready for this runway because it is sick thing boot. So I got COVID. Like the two weeks of this challenge, I had COVID. So I wrote my set with a COVID fever. So most of my jokes are jokes I wrote with a 101 degree fever stuck on the couch. And if your jokes are less funny than my COVID fever jokes, then you should be embarrassed. I feel like every challenge that I have been expected to do well, I have not done as well as expected and the first couple times it hurt and now it's par for the course. I don't expect to win at this point. I don't, I don't, I don't need to. So, okay. So I was just doing some regular around the house stuff. The ADHD kicked in. I decide, you know what? I'm gonna clean under the couch so the cat can get her cat toy's back. I'm alone in the house. And me being brilliant thinking, oh, you know, don't talk too much, get my breath. Me being the brilliant scientist I am, the, the freaking visionary, I'm like, oh, I'll just do it myself when no one's home. What's, what's the worst that could happen? The worst that can happen is that I can collapse and that my, my disabilities will in fact disable me. This time I fell a lot less gracefully. I, I pathumped on the chair on the way down. Like, like I, I, I hit the ground. I'm glad that I've been at my worst during challenges where I don't need to be physically at my best. Because if it was the reverse, then I don't, I don't know what I would do. I've seen my physical performances when I was at my worst, and it's bad. It's real rough. Like I'll. 
I'll do it because I'm professional, but I have to really Tetris what I'm doing around. Okay. And now it is time for the drag dual rows. If you like what you see, make sure to tip these competitors. Their payment info will be on screen during their roast set. Welcome our lovely audience containing some of our eliminated contestants. Thank you so much for being here. She needs a woman. Hi. I bet you've missed my face around. How's it been? It's me, she needs a woman. Titanic Donovan. Guess who's back in the rabbit hole, bitches? You thought I was gone. I'm not. Bobby Uranus and Callie Coquette. Thank you guys so much for coming back for this. Let's see if these bitches are really as funny as they think they are. Hello, distinguished panel of judges. Embassy. <laughs> Our beautiful and talented castmates and Hydra, <laughs> and our amazing fans, and giving rain. <laughs> Welcome to the first judge's roast, and at this rate, probably last judge's roast, where we take a moment to focus on all the many flaws of our contestants and judges. So roasts are all in good fun, so let me start on one of my best friends in the whole world, Chrissy Da Vinci. Chrissy. <laughs> After the first week in the talent show, I kind of thought you should change your name to Christy Van Gogh because I wanted to cut both my ears off after I heard that. <laughs> no, I'm not. I do love you, and I'm glad that you ended up choosing an artist because you and Leonardo da Vinci have a lot in common. Lack of time management skills, chronically late on commissions, and charged for sodomy. Christy <laughs> has had more rude girls in her than the workroom. <laughs> Tea. Where everybody is like, I'm gonna do drag. And all I gotta say is, where are our electricians? I mean, you cannot go over here looking at Susan and not tell me that she should not be rewiring my house. Oh, <laughs> that was so <laughs> random, I love it. <laughs> but no, I really do love Susan. The judges love Susan. The fans love Susan. She is the Susan Boyle of drag. <laughs> <laughs> and just like her, we're not gonna win this. So Susan taught me something very valuable. Comedy comes from a dark place. Coincidentally, that happens to also be where Susan does her makeup. <laughs> it's true. Tyler is an enigma. Honestly, I think he's at this point everybody's favorite on the cast. I mean, he's an angel sent from above. But if I were you, I would change my name to Charles III because it took you losing your queen to finally win something. I love these historical <laughs> references. Orbit is another one that I am so in love with on the cast. One of the people who I'm closest with at this point. But after talking to her, I can tell you, I don't think she's ever tried the gum. Rumor has it, during the lip sync with Bobby, her breath smelled so bad that Bobby had to ask for a break. <laughs> Let's okay. talk about Hydra. Wait, what? Hydra, I really love you because you are so unique. I mean, you're white, you're skinny, you're usually blonde. I mean, what else could we ask for? Now I'm going to start with the judges. I mean, that's what we all came here for. It is the judges roast. So I'm gonna start with the person that puts the bear in unbearable, Derek. Derek doesn't play Minecraft, but he smells like he does. <laughs> I do love you, Derek. I mean, I love your name. The drag detective, it is so cool. But I do have a case for you. The case? of the missing credentials. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, yeah, I know that sounds mean, but the draggiest thing about Derek is his over-exaggeration. He told us that he was stoning his promo for this, and I don't know if it counts if there's more seasons of drag race than there are stones on the outfit. <laughs> but no, I honestly think Derek is so cute. He is a specimen. He has B-D-E. Bald dad energy. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of bald dad energy, we have Bussy with the good hemorrhoids. Okay, girl. <laughs> They're not good. So it's Bussy not is somebody who I have been watching on YouTube for years. I've really gotten to see her evolution. It does remind me, though, that evolution happens really slowly. <laughs> the thing I do admire about Bussy is how she can go out there and every single time she performs like no one is watching. I'm assuming it's because they're all on their phones, but I like to give her credit. 
And since we are down a judge, I do think I'm going to take this time to just roast Hydra a little longer. So Hydra, I know we all need to be recycling, but that doesn't mean wearing the same makeup every week. And the same boots. <laughs> Hydra is so bad, she couldn't get booked at a library. What? <laughs> I didn't get that at all, baby. <laughs> One thing I like to say about Hydra is there could be a hundred people in the room, and 99 of them would call Hydra a bitch. And the other one would be Hydra. <laughs> That's just true. <laughs> one day in the group chat, Hydra asked us if she could do blackface. It wasn't a roast. I just wanted to let you all know that. <laughs> that's just not funny and that's just not true, so... Is <laughs> it true? The silly goose herself. Next up is Hydra. Thank you, Trisha. Wasn't she great? Trisha has come for me for my joke delivery, which is rich coming from someone whose delivery could only be described as a miscarriage. <laughs> she has a point. She's right. My delivery is a bit flat. Not as flat as Christie's wigs, but it is a bit <laughs> flat. And it's hard. It's hard. It's scary. English is my third language. And this entire cast is so funny. Like, Susan and Tyler have had some of the funniest moments of the season with their unreal looks. And Bootsy <laughs> is so funny looking. And Derek is almost as hilarious as the hilarious Ross Matthews. Like, it's such a stacked season. But no, really, this cast is the best we could do for season one of the Paralympics of Drag. Not the Paralympics! But they say a good roast should come from a place of love. So I'm not gonna mention Orbit. Oh god. <laughs> drag queens are so stupid. Say it with me. How stupid are they? Drag queens are so stupid. How many queens does it take to screw in a light bulb? Well, clearly more than two because Trisha and Christy couldn't keep the lights on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now we've all heard of a lip sync assassination and Titanic in his endless pursuit of reinventing the wheel has done a lip sync suicide. No, but suicide is a horrible thing. It's a dark, tragic thing that's way too present in the LGBTQ community. Just like Titanic. What the fuck? Susan with a question mark. Now, what I love about Susan is that she does this type of drag where it makes you ask questions about it. Like, why is she here? Who let her in? <laughs> what is she doing? Where's the bathroom when she's leaving? Now, I really feel for Susan because I can't even imagine how hard it must be to live with all those chronic illnesses. And you know they're chronic because she's never been sickening. And on the judges' table, Butsy, Derek, and celebrity guest judge, question mark. Butsy is such a fighter for the LGBTQ rights, and Derek is a representative of the LGBTQ wrongs. <laughs> and last up on the <laughs> judges' yes. panel, Piers. How could we forget? Very easily. Very, very, very <laughs> easily. You've heard of Lock of the Irish, and Piers is the misfortune of the Irish. Now, my accent was awful, but at least it's better than Pierce's. Like, what the fuck is that about? Where do you keep your accent in the same place you keep your personality, bitch? Percy <laughs> 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 and Derek both hail from the land of YouTube, and they've also both had issues with Butterface. No, not the YouTube channel, it's just how they look. <laughs> now, Butsy, Butsy is so youthful. She has a beautiful face of a child, and the beautiful body of someone bearing child. Oh, Butsy so is not so there. fat that her immigrating was the biggest landmass loss Serbia has had since Kosovo. And if you don't know what Kosovo <laughs> is, well, your educational system failed you, you stupid bitch. Well, not all stereotypes are bad. Like, for example, most Americans are stupid. Like, have you met Derek? But Christy said, no, I'm gonna break stereotypes. I'm gonna prove not all Americans have good teeth. Derek and Tyler have a lot of similarities. For example, Derek is the drag detective and Tyler's drag is defective. <laughs> There's one good thing I can say about Tyler's runways. I'll tell you about it. <laughs> now, Tyler has accused me of hating him because he's a bio woman, but judging by the hair and the makeup, I think you're also a biohazard. Tyler Noel is such a champion for diversity. Each of his teeth is from a different ethnic background. <laughs> legendary oh Chanel said, when you leave the house, take at least one thing off. And 
I don't think you should have even left the house, Tyler. I really don't. I just don't. I'm sorry. No, I'm not saying I hate Tyler, no. I'm just insinuating. <laughs> and now I have the incredible privilege to announce the next alleged entertainer, Tyler No. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I can't believe they got that voice actor from the Soviet era knockoff of the Muppets for this. Whoa. That's crazy. <laughs> what? Hydra, you have been consistently high in this competition, which tells me that so of the judges. No, but seriously, I think some people were really surprised that this unknown Serbian just came in and started decimating us all week after week. Oh, no. I mean, I wasn't because I've heard of Kosovo, but maybe the Americans <laughs> missed that lesson while they were doing an active shooter drill or something. Speaking of historical atrocities, the only thing more lifeless than Susan's mixed performance is her mom. <laughs> Don't worry, I can make that joke. Because Susan's halfway to joining her, so she's going to be mad at me. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Susan does have a debilitating chronic illness that just destroys her body. It makes her really bad at drag. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I think when God made Susan, he was playing devil's advocate for eugenics. She's gay, she's sick, she's a drag queen. <laughs> she looks like that. I think they cast her on here as a make-a-wish. Oh, no. Jokes aside, Susan, I am really sorry to hear about your health struggles. It must be so difficult living with such a disgusting, grotesque tumor that just drains the life out. Oh, sorry. Sorry, that's Bobby. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about him because the only successful thing he did in this competition was elicit a real emotion out of Christy. I agree! <laughs> Drag is fun, right? Now, I have always heard that the key to a good roast is to balance out the jabs and the humor with a certain level of respect for the subject, which is what made it so hard to roast these judges. First up, we have Butsy, who kind of looks like a yassified egg, <laughs> or like if Trisha Paytas got a really botched FFS. <laughs> what can I say about Butsy that hasn't already been said by Utica Queen on season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race? Butsy's name in Serbian basically means fatty, which I personally don't think is very original. It's like if Orbit called herself Space Whore, or Trisha called herself Sixth Play. <laughs> but see, I know so little about you that I had to go searching on your YouTube channel to try and develop some material for this. And while I was there, I thought, I don't need two and a half grand this much. You should. Seriously, Bootsy's YouTube videos are almost as unwatchable as one of Titanic's lip syncs and almost as depressing as Derek's Friday night me time. Oh, what? You know, <laughs> no, YouTube videos kind of remind me of Susan's dead mom. Rotted. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that was too far. Um, Susan, I do really apologize for saying that the only thing more lifeless than your mixed performance is your mom, because it's actually both of Derek's grandmas. <laughs> Derek! <laughs> <laughs> As a lesbian, I am still not sure if I'm allowed to use the F slur, but golly gee, do you make me wanna. Fat. <laughs> is basically just an untalented gay who makes his living off the backs of other untalented gays and a couple of, like, really talented lesbians. <laughs> but you know, that got me thinking, like, why the fuck do people like this guy? Myself included. You know, I've had this little running joke that I have a crush on Derek all season. And he is kind of cute in like a serial killer who didn't finish fifth grade and wants to fuck his mom kind of way. You know, I think if I was a gay man, I would let Derek be my rock bottom. <laughs> like, 
Fucking Derek is like late night KFC. You know it's gonna be greasy and disgusting, but when you hate yourself enough, you just put up with the slimy skin and the blood clots. Stop. Oh, that's all my time. But don't worry, next up we have Drag Jewel's very own Walmart Juno Birch. Give it up for Orbit! Let's get this roast a cookin'. Not this. Callie, I love your reels on Instagram showing what you would have worn for the competition. Based on those looks, your track record would have totally been low, eliminated, 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 again, <laughs> eliminated. Glass stain. You're such a slut, your name shouldn't be glass stain. It should be cum stick cross dresser looking for now. Oh, how much more does she have? Oh, she has an audience. Well, <laughs> Hydra. You know, last round you went for Jody Arias, but instead it was Jody uh, Pretty Shit. Um, you know what they say about Serbian drag queens named Hydra? They should quit drag. What's happening? Susan, you are so fat, girl. <laughs> No, but, um, actually, your mom died. <laughs> <laughs> Queen down! <laughs> oh my god. Trisha, um, Trisha can. More like trash can. Where'd you get your confessional look, girl? The Goodwill bin. Oots! <sighs> Christy Da Vinci, aka Faggot in Makeup. Your eyelashes are so small, I can't even see them. <coughs> this has to be on purpose. <laughs> Tyler Noll. More like Tyler Nor because you're like Australian or whatever, and that's bad. Um, no, but seriously, I feel like I feel like nobody gives you credit for your work. They're right. What does that say, uh, Der Derek? Derek, would you please shut the fuck up with your no drag knowledge mouth? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but they call you the drag detective. Maybe instead of drag, you should investigate that hairline, bitch. <laughs> Uh, bussy queen. What? Wrong Your one, wigs honey. are so flat. At this point, just become a prostitute. It looks like you're wearing a surfboard on your head. I kind of am. With all that hair, makeup, and light on your face, Maybe we should call you Bussy Mirage. So tell us a joke. I I thank you and good night. Get off the stage, Tranny. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much, Orbit, for that horrible introduction. The most horrible no introduction. Lynch, Christina Lynch. Here we are at the judges' roast. I would say thank you for having me at this event, but I'm currently sitting in my own home. Um, <laughs> so this season has been full of gags, but mostly vomit when people look at Susan on the runway. Um, and although Susan is the questionable queen this season, she still makes more sense to me than Hydra winning the audition tape challenge. But you know, and if you're wondering, no, I'm not better. <laughs> I just think it's funny. How it's been said the Hydra is the villain of the season, but I think y'all need to cut my girl some slack. There's only so nice you can be when you have to cram your feet into ugly ass shoes every week. Also, speaking of vomit and runways, my designing sister Trisha Can is still here. Say what you will about my girl, but she will always make a comeback. Just like an STI symptom you just can't get rid of. She will survive by the skin of her teeth and the cold sore of her lip. And honestly, there, me and Trisha definitely have something in common. Let's just say me and Trisha have pretty much caught every STI you can get that they haven't written a musical about. 
Now, before I go on, I have to say I absolutely love Orbit. Having another indigenous artist here fills my heart with so much joy and so much happiness. And with that being said, please get eliminated soon so I can have more diversity points because at this point, the finale is about to be wider than an Old Navy summer sale. And that's not to diminish her incredible talents, okay? I mean, Orbit has the face of an incredible makeup artist and the wardrobe of a Claire's sales rack. Tyler, no, no, I know we haven't always seen eye to eye, but honestly, lately in this competition, I felt myself kind of becoming a stan of you. And I just want to support you and give you as much help as possible. With that being said, I just have one piece of advice for you. It is never too late, nor too early, to drop. Hope that helps. Moving on to our judges. Um, it is so incredible to have such iconic, influential people be our guest judges while we're stuck with you two every week. <laughs> the judges and I True. also have an oyster eye to eye. Or for the case of me and Beauty, um, eye to wonky eye. The judges all season have been asking me for bigger drag and more makeup. And you know what? I'll tell you what. I will wear a 20-foot ball gown and a clown face when Bootsy has a wig that is glued down on both sides. How about that? Moving on to Derek. Derek, 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 the drag detective. Too bad he couldn't crack the case of the missing hairline. <laughs> now, Derek, you're an icon and a legend in the drag race YouTube community. And I just wanted to know, how does it feel to finally have your own competition to rig? This is not good. I'm so proud. Just kidding, just kidding. Derek is probably the most fair judge in this competition, but I only say that because he usually gives me the most compliments, so I might be a little biased. Um, not that the judges would ever know anything about bias. Rue never. Now, before I get disqualified, that concludes my time. But don't worry, it only gets worse from here. Please welcome the one and only, and thank God there's only one of her, Susan? Thank you for the introduction, Sid from Ice Age. <laughs> no, Sid from Ice Age! Now, what can I say about Christy Da Vinci that Bobby hasn't already accurately said? <laughs> Christy Da Vinci has all the charisma of a DMV worker with all the beauty of a DMV worker. <laughs> Christy's so stupid that when I said, Christy, you have plumbers correct, she said, no, I got this from a bus driver. Christy is so <laughs> stupid that on 9-11 she forgot. Let me okay. guess one of her roast jokes. Orbit, thank you for when you said that I am what you introduced to roast for me to even do. And maybe one of your outfits and if the judges thought they saw, right? On to Orbit. If Orbit was a color, it'd be Moran. If Orbit was a flavor, it'd be none because she has no taste. And if Orbit was a car part, she'd be a bad transmission, or as a mechanic would say, a busted... No! But in all seriousness, the state of trans women in this country is deplorable, and I would hate for anything to happen to her tonight outside her Eugene, Oregon apartment on 57 West Main Street when she heads home from work at approximately 7.30 p.m. I wouldn't want anything to happen. Now on to the diversity of the cast, Hydra. In every confessional, Hydra looks like she's being held at gunpoint. Hydra has all the cadence of a child that killed their parents. Hydra is so quiet, if she were American, she'd have shot up a school. If Hydra was a language, it'd be sign. Hydra is so quiet that I thought she spent her summer in an attic in Amsterdam in the 1940s. It's okay, I can make that joke. My father was German. No! On to Trisha. Trisha has all the complexity of Christy with all the beauty of me. Trisha is the drag duel equivalent of a traffic jam because it's taking her forever to get nowhere. Trisha can is the Sandy Hook of comedy. People are gonna suffer. It. It's gonna be a messy cleanup. And the best way to describe it is a tragedy that should have never happened. Oh my god. So who wants to hear a black joke? Okay. Trisha Can is so black. No. And that is all my NAACP donations will allow me to say. <laughs> Tyler Noel is still here. Uh -huh. Tyler loves complaining about Hydra almost as much as Orbit loves touching her own hair. Tyler has all the talent of a floppy toddler with all the reliability of a teenage father. Bobby and Tyler's <laughs> rivalry was kind of like watching two wheelchair kids fight. Yeah, one's gonna win, but is either really a winner? <laughs> Tyler and Shinidza are the reason why South Korea's greatest import is shitty drag. Real, real shitty, shitty, shit, shitty drag. Now, before I move on to the judges, I just want to thank them for sparing us from a Titanic roast. And I wanted to thank Bobby for all his support. And I'm so glad to be surrounded by so many different kinds of comedian. 
There's Hydra, who's clever, and Orbit's campy, and Christy's pretty quick-witted, and Bootsy because of her looks. <laughs> Out of drag, Bootsy looks like a 45-year-old ex-con, but in drag, Bootsy looks like a 45-year-old ex-con's mom. <laughs> now, fun fact, That's did you know true. that when Bootsy isn't doing drag duels, she's real busy selling her purple shakes at McDonald's? Hydra. McDonald's is a place that sells food. Food is the thing you don't have. <laughs> My favorite thing about Bootsy's judging is the fact that she pretends to look at us while she's giving critiques. I guess she's real used to it from pretending she has an audience at her shows. <laughs> Our guest judge, what's his name, is here. Oh no, I can't believe I forgot Runner Eye. <laughs> Ooh, I'm sure that's the first time that's happened to him ever. <laughs> Runner Eye actually doubled his view count recently when the six of us had to look at one of his videos to learn who the fuck he was. Oh but my Runner God. Eye, I did want to congratulate you on being the first Irish person that's hot. Now on to Derek the Drag Detective. Derek is a proud virgin, I assume. Derek, you butt plug shaped motherfucker, you look procedurally generated. Derek, you have the face of a troll doll and the body of a cabbage patch. <laughs> Derek, I wanted to congratulate you on getting the only drag YouTuber less relevant than yourself. But I want to thank you, Derek, for making all this happen because otherwise I wouldn't get my money. But when Derek told me that both of his grandmothers died in the same week, I thought, oh. Like, wouldn't it have been you? So <laughs> this, I just want to quote my dead grandmother. Rest in power. Kill yourself and quit drag in that order. You've been a lovely audience. Good night. <laughs> that was like... Okay. I can take it. And I can take it in good fun and laugh at myself and poke fun at myself. I felt in this rose there were some jokes pointed at me that were coming from a bad place. But I felt like uh, the worst thing you can do in a rose is sound bitter and sound resentful and hateful. But in like an unfun way and I think uh, three people did. And I think that really killed the roasts. And uh, I want to address this. Uh, I had issues with uh, her saying the blackface thing uh, because uh, I asked in the chat, hey, I want to check because I had an idea to paint like my mouth and my chin black because I had a headpiece all over my face and I wanted to, it to seem like a hole and just be recessed. I was like, hey, this isn't my culture. Uh, is it fine if I paint my chin and my mouth black for the runway? Uh, this isn't my culture. I would love for you like, to educate me. And she, was, and she wrote out a message and was like, very nice about it and was like, she was grossed out by Jimbo painting his face black ones. And I think to make a joke about it now is like a bit nasty and the opposite of doing good uh, because it was uh, putting me down for asking to be educated about something that I'm not in a position to know enough about because I don't, that's not my culture. I don't live in America. All I know about it is from the internet. We literally don't have black people to learn from here in Serbia. I don't know, it just made me feel really bad and it made me feel like she was trying to use the opportunity to put me down and possibly uh, make people have a bad thought in their mind about me asking to be educated and trying to do the good thing. Before we go, I wanted to ask our audience, Callie, who was your favorite and your least favorite from this? Well, my favorite is probably going to have to be Hydra because she actually read people, like what you're supposed to do at a roast. And least favorite, hmm, I'm gonna have to say Orbit because I think she did succeed in channeling Pheromone. Bobby, what about you? Who are your favorite and least favorite? I gotta say Susan, not just because I'm biased, uh, not just because she feeds me, but because uh, uh, finally someone read my lisp. Least favorite? Orbit. Acknowledging that you're doing bad didn't make it funny. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Chris, this is the only one where I started skipping. Any final thoughts before we send you guys back to the slaughterhouse? Everybody did a decent job overall. I would rate the entire roast a uh, 5.5 out of 10. Trisha, a six. 
The next one was Hydra, a seven. Tylenol, a nine. Ten! <laughs> Tylenol, a nine. Uh, Orbit, a four. Christy, a four. Generous. And Susan, a nine. That is, that's how I'd read it. Christy did not go, was not the worst. And she went first. So, you know, good job there. I agree. Trisha was not the worst, unlike she was on the episode I went home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you all so much for coming back. We appreciate it, and we'll see you all at the reunion. <laughs> thank you for having me. Loved being here. Well, that was amazing. I don't know if I should laugh or cry. I think I'll decide that later over an 18-inch Costco pizza. But now, it is time for the runway, and the category is... Monochromatic. DJ, hit it! For this week's runway, I am giving you latex, shiny, PVC fantasy. I draped the skirt, I made this jacket, and I made this hat all in one day. It's giving fashion, it's giving pigtail, it's honestly kind of giving Gaga from Mugler. It's giving everything. I look so gorgeous, I feel so hot, and not just because of the fabric. My color was red, and that is the color I am wearing. I've got my little robe, I've got my little lingerie, I've got my wig hat, I've got big shoes, and I look red. <sighs> I am so drained from this competition with everybody sleepy on my looks. And I wanted to just do monochromatic in a lazy day kind of way. I want to show I just woke up and you're gonna like it because I am sickening. So for my runway this week, I did green. And so I wanted to do this sort of lime showgirl pinup vintage queen girl sipping on her Sprite on the lawn. I'm very happy with what we came up with in the matter of like a couple days. This is my best look of the season. I made everything from head to toe and I'm redeeming myself for allegedly missing the theme last week. This week's runway was very special for me because this was actually the first time my mom saw me in drag and she actually filmed me doing the entire runway. So all I have to say this week is you're welcome. On the runway today, I am representing the Pink House, my drag family here in Seoul, with this 80s glam rock inspired look. It's a little bit of Bowie, it's a little bit of Pete Burns, and it's a whole lot of Tylenol. Wow, those were some stunning runway looks. Once again, our warriors have brought it and it will be an impossible task to cut it from a top six into the top five, but it has to be done. Welcome to our judging panel. My favorite Drag Race YouTuber, which I guess is not that hard to be, Pierce, AKA Runner Eye. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys so much for having me. I love what you've done with the place. Whoa, it's beautiful. Thank you so much for having me. I, I love having you. Um, how's Ireland? How's the accent? Is it coming in yet? Uh, no, but I don't think it ever will at this point. We're 22 years deep in, uh, and I was at the shop today, and when someone started talking to me with a posh accent, I did start to kind of like talk back to her like that. Uh, so maybe I just need to talk to some Irish people a lot more. Okay, I mean, then. it's kind of hard to find those where you're at, I'm assuming, but... Well, I just live a very isolated life, so yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Butsy can Butsy can relate to that. So. I can definitely relate. My only interaction is with the McDonald's worker, and that's through the drive-thru, so. And that's on the app. <laughs> and that's on the app, yes. So let's start off with Trisha Can. 
Pierce, how did you feel about Trisha's roast performance? I loved it. She was such a great opening. I thought that her energy was amazing. Uh, but it, there was this, a slight kind of like, you know, awkwardness of her like looking around the room. But that's why I loved it even more. It just added more of that like levity. There was seri like serious acting skills going on along with the roast. She was inspired by Bootsy doing the placement. <laughs> so yes. I love when people steal my material. But no, she was a surprise this week because I'm gonna be honest, she hasn't been delivering as much in the comedy challenges and I know how nervous she was going into this. So to see her actually deliver, it was amazing. And one thing I want to applaud her is she didn't cut between every joke. She knew her material. And I think that she actually had some of the most original and creative jokes. like. The one about Christy Da Vinci, like wanting to cut off her ears whenever Christy sings. Like she had some really fun things that like were unexpected. And I was just really proud of her. I wish the delivery was just a little bit more confident. I think she could have packed a, like a little bit more of a punch. Cause I also thought the confidence at the beginning was a little bit, you know, shaky. But I think as soon as it got to like that halfway point, she really kind of got into it. And by the end, I was like fully and completely buying every single joke and I loved it. She looked so good at that roast too. She looks so stunning. Okay, let's move on to her monochromatic runway. She chose the color gray. The way she elevated the average jersey material and turned a little, literal sweatpants into high fashion moment is what I really love. And then when you look at the details where it wasn't just sweatpants that were cut open, they were lined from the inside. There is attention to detail. There is that polish that Trisha always puts into her garments. And then when you look at the top, everything that was corseted and fitting her body perfectly, but also was loose in the right places because it's still like a sweatpants moment where you want it to be a little bit baggy. I really loved the contrast of that. Specifically, I loved the hair and how huge it was and it eclipsed her. It's like a massive like cloud on her head. I feel like early on, a lot of people kind of wrote Trisha off just because of those first few performances, but she continuously shows that she has more to bring. She shows us new sides of herself and she's proving why she still deserves to be here. Like she is a real contender. Okay, next up we have Hydra. How do you, do you feel about Hydra in the roast, Bootsy? I honestly did not expect Hydra to deliver this level of comedy, just looking at her previous box talks. But the way she had such smart jokes and the way she delivered them, she like acted out a lot of her jokes. Her jokes were funny. They were intellectual, which I know means that Derek didn't understand a lot of them. And am I wrong? No. <laughs> and she was just over, she overall had me entertained and had me laughing. She went far uh, into places which are very dark and uh, a little bit uh, extreme, uh, but in a way which should kind of like push the boundaries uh, in a roast. For a judge's roast, I wish there were more jokes about the judges because I felt like I got like maybe a half of a joke like one and a half maybe and she mostly focused on <laughs> Pierce. <laughs> I was gonna say she loved me so I'm okay with it. <laughs> and the other contestants whereas like me and Bootsy I felt like didn't get enough for the judges roast. Because I'm the main judge. I've replaced Zelda. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Moving on to Hydra's runway. I think that garment was stunning. The way it moved the way she sold it, all the pearl pieces and then the ostrich feather, the headpiece. It was so detailed. Like, I don't know how she sourced all of these different things that all went together so well from like the gloves to the little like jewelry on her nose to like the headpiece, like everything felt like it belonged together. I think it was amazing. It was beautiful to me, a little boy. I think that this and Titanic's Corpse Bride look are the top two looks of the season so far. To me, it, it matches that level. She started at 100, but she's now at 150. And I'm like excited to see where she goes from there. Up next, we have Tyler Nall. Pierce, what did you think of Tyler's roast? In terms of everyone, I felt like Tyler had the most confidence in terms of like a persona in the roast. Cause I, I as a little viewer, I felt totally and completely confident in the arms of Tyler. And I just had absolutely no qualms. I loved this. I thought his look for this was so interesting and so fun. I thought he did have some 
very mean jokes that maybe weren't as funny and were just kind of mean. Um, but for the most part, all the jokes landed and I, I thought he did a really good job. I laughed a lot during Tyler's roast, even though he insulted me the most. I still love Tyler and I promise I will not hold a grudge. The face of someone <laughs> who's not holding a grudge. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What about Tyler's runway? What did you think about the runway but scene? I think everything worked perfectly. It gave me this pink monochromatic 80s rock and roll dude energy and I really loved that. Yeah, it was very like Gem and the Holograms, like updated. I thought the wig choice was fun. It was a nice contrast to the pinks. I thought the makeup was really good. I love how it was stoned to fucking death. Okay, up next we have Orbit, who I have so many thoughts. She came to us with this concept of using drag race jokes and quotes all throughout her roast. And we were like, Orbit, no. Like we're looking for creative, original jokes. And I think she somewhat took our advice, but still had just so many references to other people's jokes or flops or whatever. Like I was thinking about like why someone would do this. And I was wondering, I was just like, is it that that's a funny concept? Or is there maybe a little part which says, if I make the joke that I'm bombing, then technically no joke can't land because any joke that doesn't land means that I was it was part of the bit. Um, it was a bold choice. I think if this was highly edited, it would have landed better. But because there's no editing, it's just like, okay. I kind of like the no editing though. Pierce, this is exactly what you do on your channel. So you should like this. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. No. It's hard for us to kind of judge being like, this joke was bad, but yeah, that was the whole point. But at the same time, just comparing it to others, it stood out for all the wrong reasons. This could have been a great week for her, but because I think she just couldn't get this idea out of her head, it just dragged her down. Yeah. Um. Now for Orbit's runway look, she chose green. Um, but see, what did you think about her runway? I do applaud her for those details, like the little chains that she added as a little drip, the cardboard lines that she made that added to corset. It did all add to the look, but just comparing it to everything else, I feel like it could have been more elevated if there was a bottom part to the outfit and not just a corset and a panty, it would make more of a difference. I thought she was a really sexy lime. And that's all I have to... <laughs> okay, up next was Christy Da Vinci. Pierce, what did you think about Christy's roast performance? I thought it was a perfectly safe performance. I thought it was fine. It was middle of the road. Did I... I, I don't remember if I left, which I guess isn't a good sign. But it was fine. Like, it, it was... There was jokes there. The expectations were high for her coming into this because she did so well in the Vox talk. She did so well in the audition tapes. So it was a little bit disappointing when we saw that she didn't take full advantage of the time she was allotted. So her roast was the shortest and it had the least jokes. The jokes she did have were funny. However, some delivery may have gotten lost because I also now looking back, don't remember me just losing my mind over a lot of the jokes. They were funny, they were perfectly serviceable, but it wasn't up to the standard that others brought. All of them did amazing. If this was four weeks ago, all of them would have been safe or high. But at this point, we have to compare them to each other. And unfortunately, Christie's roast kind of stacked down. Um, I was wondering if maybe there was like, her roommate was sleeping or like was doing something because she was talking kind of quietly. Um, and in a roast, you need to like project. If you're gonna be tearing people to shreds, you at least need to have some like conviction in what you're saying. So I was missing a little bit of that. But see, what did you think about her runway? So Christy's runway, I think looks stunning. This is the level of drag we expect from Christy. Everything was on point. I love her little hat. As you can see, I love my fascinator moment. I loved how everything was fitted to her. I love the material, but one thing she didn't follow the rules again where we asked them to have multiple fabrics she had multiple pieces from the same fabric that's why we wanted to splice up the challenge a little bit just to give them a little bit of a challenge because if you use the same fabric for everything yes it will be monochromatic and she didn't follow that prompt unfortunately and again at this point of the competition those are the things we have to look at i loved the hair the hair was so cute with this okay last up we have Susan, 
and Pierce. How do you think she did? She mentioned me, so I thought it was amazing. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. I think you could see that she was in her element. Um, I thought the absolute travesty of a green screen was absolutely beautiful. The pacing is the only thing I could critique because it did feel like joke after a joke after a joke after a joke. But it was funny, like I was still laughing for the previous joke while she went on the another one and then I was laughing for that one and it just kept me entertained. She had material for days and this is what we expected from her. She had almost double the jokes of everyone else. Like she didn't have these like long drawn out like jokes. It was just punchline, punchline, punchline. It was like rapid fire roast, which I really thought was funny. I mean, this is what Susan does best make people cry. For the runway too, I appreciated that she did something completely different. It really was exciting. Like I really liked it and her makeup has never looked better. So for her to come out in just lingerie and look really sexy and beautiful, it was like, I never would have expected this, but I needed it. It was the most glamorous that she's looked all season. I appreciated that she had a breastplate. As somebody who never uses them, I like to see them. I'm considering buying one, so. I'm, I'll be contacting Susan about that. Uh, I loved, and I know she added like a bunch of feathers because if that was a store bought coat, it doesn't come with that many feathers. So she did add little details like rhinestoning her uh, bodice, etc. So the only critique I would have is I wish the eyebrows were a bit lower and they did seem a little bit too high for the drag makeup, the seductive makeup she was going for. But other than that, the makeup was blended. Everything looked good. I really liked what Susan presented this week. Once again, I want to thank every single one of you for delivering amazing content each and every week. The judges have scored the contestants based on their roast performance worth 60 points and based on their monochromatic runway presentation worth 40 points. With the averages of those scores, we have our placements. I think it's definitely between me and Susan, and my runway is definitely a lot better, even though hers is good. Tough decisions have to be made. Tyler Knoll. Please be tough, please be tough, please be tough, please be tough. Great job this week. You are safe. Yes! Yes! Okay, okay. I am top, but safe, which is what I expected. I hope Susan wins the challenge. Please let Susan win the challenge because I swear to fuck if it's Hydra. Susan and I are the top two of the week and I'm so happy, especially after everyone was like, you're not funny, suck it. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so happy. And maybe I wouldn't have been in the top without Susan helping me. So I'm, yeah, I'm so excited. I hope Susan wins. I wanted to win every week. I think I was robbed every week from this time, but this week, it's Susan's, like, she helped me so much. I think she deserves this week. Hydra, amazing job this week. You are also safe. Yay, yay, Susan. Susan, period. <laughs> the thing is, like, I wasn't living for Hydra's. Can't tell if it was, like, actually unfunny to me or if it's just because I don't like her. Oh, Susan? Hey girl, I just want to let you know that you are the winner of this week's challenge. Yes, Susan! I am so happy for you! Fucking finally! My girl Susan, my sister, you deserve this 100%. This is iconic. I'm so happy. I'm, I'm like genuinely so happy she won. That's right, you win a cash prize of $100 and the chance to move on to the top five. Oh my God, babe, you'll never guess what happened. I won. <gasps> oh my God, she got me flowers. Thank you, Denise. <laughs> Thank goodness you didn't give Hydra another win. She did not deserve it this week. Her runway was fringe and a corset. Thank fuck. Even if I go home today, go home. Even if I get eliminated today, at least Susan won. At least I go out and Susan wins and my girl Christy and Trisha are still in the game, like whatever. But God, thank fuck Susan won. Happy she finally got her first win. Thank the Lord. It was deserved, um, you know, fuck that other bitch. Um, you didn't deserve the win. I don't care how delusional you are. So, and don't try to like, don't, oh God. And don't try to like fucking 
forced like, oh, I'm nice. I promise I, I promise I love you. No, bitch, you said what you said. And that's not on that. So if you want to really fight, let's go. I do not care. Bitch, I wish we were in the bottom because I know I would send your ass home, Hydra. Because I know I'm a better performer than you, period. Anyway. Orbit. Hang on. I am sorry, but you are in the bottom. I knew this was coming. I took over Titanic's role of um, just completely ignoring the challenge and doing my own thing. So you're welcome. You're welcome, queen. I kept the legacy alive. Like, I knew it. I know. I don't need people in the comments to be like, deserved, like, I know it, okay? Trisha and Christy. Both of you did a great job this week, but we had to nitpick. Trisha can. You are safe. Oh! Which means, Christy Da Vinci, I'm sorry, but you are in the bottom. Definitely did not see that coming. <gasps> that means Orbit and Christy are bottom. Oh, this is gonna be a good fucking lip sync. <gasps> it really sucks to be in the bottom with her. I consider us sisters, at least at least in the competition's sake, but I still feel like outside of the competition, I love her and I love talking to her. So like, slay. Not to do a cliche, but at the end of the day, it's daytime outside. So when this goes down, <clears throat> I'm not here to make best buddy, bitch. <laughs> Um, you've been everybody's BFF and ki 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 no. <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, I love her, but you gotta look out for yourself. I'm hoping I can continue my run in this competition, but I'm not confident given the fact, I know she's been in the bottom twice before, but she also has two wins. So it kind of evens out and I think her track record is just better than mine. So just going based on that, I'm not really confident. And also from her previous lip syncs, she's a good performer. So I'm kind of like, oh God, this is a, like, a, I'm actually like nervous now. Orbit and Christy, the time has come for you to face each other in the drag duel to the death. <laughs> to a lip sync song, I'm Blue by Eiffel 65. DJ, hit it! Yo, listen up, here's the story About a little guy that lives in a blue world And all day and all night And everything he sees is just blue Like him inside and outside Blue his house with a blue little window And a blue Corvette And everything is blue for him and himself and everybody around cause he ain't got nobody to listen to listen to listen to listen I'm blue
Thank you both so much on another amazing lip sync performance. But we have made our decision. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Orbit, you are safe. Which means that we are very sorry, but Christy Da Vinci, you are the next warrior to be eliminated. I'm gagged. Yeah, I so sad they think Orbit won that one. I'm in disbelief and shock. Not my dandruff, John one. Y'all, don't look at my lice. I'm just kidding, I don't have any of that. At least I hope. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm so happy that I get to stay. I'm so happy because I'm so excited for the next challenge and I, I'm happy that I can continue being here. But it, when I tell you it sucks and it hurts, to be, to not only have Christy eliminated, who is my trans indigenous sister, who I feel is very, is a very close friend. It sucks so hard to like be the one to send her home. Never thought I'd be lip syncing to fucking I'm blue, but here we are. Wow, really sucks that I got eliminated. This is a lot more interesting than I thought it was gonna be. I thought, I thought Christy was a shoe in for the finale. Now Christy, this was a heartbreaking decision. We see your talent, we see your potential, we see what you can do. We see how amazing you are at drag. We love you Christy and we cannot wait to see you go on to greater and better things. You are a superstar, you are talented, you are amazing, and this is by far the hardest elimination, but it has to be done. Thank you for gracing us with your presence this season. Oh, Christy. Girl, you are fucking iconic. You absolutely slayed this competition. You know how good you are. You know that you are going are in this shit and if this competition wasn't quite the right time for you like it doesn't mean anything and i'm so glad that more people have got to see what you do because you are going to fucking just keep on topping yourself <laughs> you're gonna keep shooting for the stars girly pop <laughs> christy i love you so much um, I love talking to you. I love your drag. I love, I love you, Queen. You are a friend to me. You have a sister till the very end, for real. I love you, and I promise me and Trisha will turn, we'll, we'll turn it out. We'll turn it out for you, Queen. We will. I'm sorry I couldn't do this with my acrylics either. It sucks. But I'm happy to see her stay. I mean, I love her. I'm just really sad to see, you know, Chicago go home. My sister, you know, we went into this together. It was crazy. I did not think she was going to be leaving us anytime soon. As the first person with two wins and all the sickening moments she's had, I, I am so sad to see Christy go. These past couple months have been rough. Pretty rough on me. At the end of the day, being on a competition was not the right thing for me right now. And regardless of how I feel about my own winners, I mean, I'm sure we'll get into it more at the reunion. At least I plan on getting into it. It's frustrating, it's sad, it's annoying, but it's freeing in a way. It really just struck a chord with me because throughout my whole drag career, something that I feel has held me back so much is not only the fear of failure, the fear of making a mistake, but the fear of how my best efforts will be perceived. I truly was making my best effort to compete here. My ability to compete was deeply affected by the situation that I was in. And it took me getting some separation from that to really realize that. Cause for me, when I'm in a competition, I would kind of sacrifice my own mental health, my own personal situation to compete. And that is not what I should have been doing. After a certain point, it was like, what more could I have given? People see me, they see my following, they see whatever like platform I have on. Like, I don't give a fuck about Instagram or Twitter or TikTok. I really don't.
but people see what I've accumulated, quote unquote, and they have this perception of me. And for so long, I felt like I was fighting against this perception and it felt unfair. And to a certain extent, it is unfair. I don't know. I just wanted to be something more. And I wasn't able to do that because of my personal situation, which sucked. Like at the end of the day, the shit I did on an empty gas tank, I don't think anyone else could have done that in the position that I was in. No one else in this competition could have kept fighting and done what I have done because I'm me. Like, just like I couldn't have done what someone else does because I'm not them. I need to step back for a second and just be like, hey, hey, Christy, it's okay. Like, life kind of beat you down a lot and you were going through a lot. And it's okay that you weren't able to give everything you wanted to give. At the end of the day, like, hey, I hope Trisha wins and I will help her get there. And until Trisha wins, um, free Palestine, uh, <laughs> um, and colonization around the world. Um, fuck colonizers. Fuck colonizers. Be blessed. As my uh, final message until the finale and the reunion. Take care of yourself. Be aware. Be empathetic. Also, fuck y'all for making me lip sync on Thanksgiving. Bye. <laughs> For the full exit interview with Christy Da Vinci and a ton of unseen content, go subscribe to our Patreon. You can even join the Discord server where you can see what's happening real time in the arena. Also, make sure if you are able to, to tip the cast because they have done so much work on this program. They deserve a little bit of love. And if you can't tip them, then go follow them. And with that, the round eight of the drag duel is concluded. We are itching closer to that finale and deciding who the winner of the season will be. After this crazy elimination, next week is for sure going to be interesting. We'll check back in with the Warriors, see how they're dealing with Chrissy's elimination, as well as the fact that there's only one challenge left before the semifinals. Things are going to get very interesting, so be sure to tune in next week. Be sure to subscribe to us right here on YouTube so you don't miss the next week's episode. But that is it for this video. And Susan, get out of here. You cannot hide from Bobby in here. God damn it. Special thanks to patrons Woodcrafted Essentials, Michael Cruikshank, and Keone.